is uh, making the most of the Global Game Jam for 2022. Uh, so first, for anyone who isn't familiar, what is a Game Jam? Well, first of all, this is there's actually many Game Jams that happen every year. Uh, there's a, a calendar somewhere and there's like several going on at any given time. The thing that's particularly notable about the one that's coming up is it's the biggest one of the year uh, by far. There's like thousands of games being made uh, all at once. Uh, the idea of it is to build a game from start to finish in a very short time frame. They'll usually give you a theme at the beginning. Uh, there's no rules about like how closely you'd need to adhere to the theme or really any enforcement of the theme. Uh, but the idea is it to incorporate that somehow. So past themes have been things like transmission, uh, home, repair, you know, kind of general words like that, usually. Uh, when it's time to submit it, there'll be a website on itch uh, where you can submit your game and for other people to be able to play it. Um, and it's, it's not competitive, uh, and so that's going to affect how a lot of the rules uh, sort of work. Some game jams, uh, there's like a winner, you can get prizes and so on. Uh, this is not one of those. And then also the global game jam itself is separate from local chapters, like organizing meetups and team formation. So uh, Pig Squad does a lot of that in Portland. So if you want to find a team, that's uh, a great occasion to um, be with their, their group and, and find other people to work with. Uh, in terms of what to expect, normally the game jam is 48 hours, it's just like over a weekend, uh, very intensive. And it's usually like in person in these massive jam sites with several other offshoots uh, spread around Portland and then starts right when the theme is announced. Since this year and last year, because of the pandemic, uh, things have been very different. Uh, so it's been 10 days. Uh, so you can actually like, if you're having a full-time job, you can do this a little bit afterwards. Uh, so it's a lot more slower and spread out uh, January 20 to 30th. Teams are typically remote because uh, people are meeting in person less. And it, I put starts with theme announcement in a question mark because the theme actually gets announced on like January 16th or several days before the jam officially starts and everyone starts when the theme's announced. So when it actually starts is a little wonky and weird, but um, yeah. The uh, rules for it is you can be solo or on a team. There's no limit to a team size. You can have no minimum or maximum on time commitment or skill level. So you can be a raw beginner who's only working a little bit after your regular work, or you could be full-time someone who's been a development professionally for years. Everyone's welcome. Uh, you can use any game engine you like. You can pull any assets that you like. All these rules are loose because it's not competitive. So like having an advantage doesn't matter. It's just what are you going to get the most out of uh, in terms of like learning and enjoying it. Uh, also, one hard rule, though, is the project uh, should be submitted within the deadline uh, as open source. So uh, like GitHub is often a good uh, option for it. So if you have anything in your project that you don't own, like you've pulled in some assets, you're going to have to delete those from your submission. And oft, uh, one often way to get around that is to put like a note uh, in your submission saying, these are the assets you need to bring in for the game to be playable uh, or, or to have the full version of it. You'll also be submitting like a build or maybe you can put up a OpenGL uh, version of it. So you have a playable thing and then the full source as a separate submissions. And the full source might not actually work because you've pulled stuff out. Uh, before you jam, uh, a couple of things. First, clarify what your own personal goals are. Uh, I'll have more on that in a little bit. Just if you know what you're trying to get going in, you're less likely to have to kind of conflicting implied goals. Uh, gather a team uh, before the jam starts so that you're not spending that time, you know, while the days are going past. And also use that time to establish any, like how you're gonna communicate, what your expectations are. So are you gonna have a Discord channel or, or what? Um, I would recommend picking a platform also. Are you going to want to build a game for PC? You're going to build VR, board game. Uh, board games are valid, by the way. Uh, it doesn't all have to be digital all the time. Uh, and so these, these are things that are just kind of not tied to any specific game idea. Uh, you can just make those bigger decisions in advance. It's also a way to determine who you want to work with. Like if you have three people who want to build VR and someone else doesn't have a headset and doesn't want to touch that, um, you know, if you decide that and then the person has to leave after the jam starts, it's kind of awkward. Uh, next, I uh, recommend before the jam starts, uh, download and get your tools synced. So if you're using Unity, make sure everyone has the same version. Uh, if you're using a different engine, you know, have that. 
And similar to that, set up version control in advance. Uh, that's just a, a technical thing that's not tied to any specific game. So getting it done beforehand just saves you time during the jam itself. Any other administrative stuff I would include in that. Benefits of it, one is the basic thing is it's a really low stakes experimentation that you don't really get the chance to very often uh, if you're just working in, in large scale industry kind of projects. Uh, so you can test out a novel idea and throw it away if it doesn't work or just learn something from it. You know, it was only 10 days or 48 hours traditionally. Um, one thing you can use a jam to practice a new technology or a skill. Um, caveat to that is that's going to take up all of your time if you go that route. So make sure that, that that's actually your priority and you're not trying to learn a totally new technology and also try out a new uh, game idea and also make a really polished thing to put on your resume because uh, you're probably only going to get at one of those. Um, uh, another occasion, this is a chance to work with new people, build up your network, or uh, just have a chance to work with old friends when like, if you're normally working with groups that you can't pick, this might be a chance to pick people you want to work with uh, for a little while. And it's also a chance to practice rapid prototyping and completing a project, both very useful skills that can easily get overlooked if you're just, you know, working on one thing like endlessly. Uh, and then lastly, it's a, you can also use it as a chance to test your skills and find out where your limits are. Like, can I build a game in this time? Uh, you know, do, do, I, do I know this or are there big holes in my knowledge? Uh, or maybe you don't want to jam. And actually, I included a link here. Um, I'll, I'll post this up on the meetup uh, after this is over um, to a Code Monkey video uh, where he's listing out why he doesn't participate in game jams. Um, but maybe you should. And basically, he's saying all, all these, these rules, like reasons to be in a game jam, didn't really apply to him. So that's something to consider also. Uh, for forming a team, I, there's a lot of options on uh, meetups like this one. We can have some chat if you know people want to form a team here. Uh, and also the Pig Squad Discord is a really good place. People they uh, will also be hosting meetup uh, little like speed meets uh, for for people to talk to each other and find people they want to work with. Um, or if you just know people, that works great too. For team size, uh, one observation I found is that uh, by default teams will kind of have a flat informal structure where no one's really leading it and they just kind of make decisions by consensus. And that's lovely with tiny groups. Once you get beyond three strangers or five people who know each other and work well together, that kind of starts to break down and having some kind of formal structure starts to be useful. Uh, for roles, typically teams will be balanced with uh, programmer, artist, sound. That's not actually required. You can have a bunch of programmers, nothing else and you'll have a really complex game with just little colored boxes jumping around. Or you can have a ton of artists and make a really awesome looking visual novel. Like, I, I really recommend uh, shaping your game to meet your team's interests and skills rather than trying to say, I'm going to make this game and then find who to, who to go into it. But a balanced team is, is going to be very flexible. So that's also optional. Uh, some recommended tools. Uh, Discord's great for communication. Uh, there are other things like it, like Slack. Um, and it also includes built-in video and voice chat, which is nice for those quick little uh, meetings. Um, Trello, nice for task management. Uh, version control is kind of a must. And GitHub is pretty great, uh, or at least it's just kind of a standard. Uh, source tree is basically the same thing, or uh, Bitbucket, I should say. Um, and there are others too, uh, but that's just a, a popular one. A Unity Collaborate, I honestly don't really recommend because I found it great for some freelance projects. But uh, when I had a game jam once and a bunch of like there were a bunch of people all contributing all at once, it was just constantly crashing Unity. One thing I'll mention, though, I don't I can't say I recommend this, but it's a clever hack. And maybe you can find something that's similar to it. Dealing with that issue of having to pull assets out at the last minute. Uh, one thing I have done in a project, this works, again, it's a little wonky, is using both Collaborate and GitHub on the same project and then using the stuff that's specific that you don't want to share in your GitIgnore and then everything on the Collaborate, which is private. Uh, that way you're able to maintain the stuff that's public that you can share in your open source version and the full version that you actually work on at the same time uh, and basically keep that separation right from the beginning. Again, just throwing that out there. I've done this. It works. I don't know if I'd recommend it though. Uh, and then lastly, for assets, um, they, the, they're, they're a trade-off. 
The benefits is they allow for greater scope and polish in the same amount of time, and they let you skip over some fairly generic uh, gameplay elements, but they'll pretty much inevitably cause technical hangups that are just annoying to deal with and can also constrain your design. If you have limitations, you'll probably just want to work with whatever those limitations are and make your game differently. Um, so just to be aware of that. Uh, Next thing, this is not going to apply to tiny groups, but just like larger ones, is I find that um, if you organize a group of like five to eight people or so, and like organize in the sense of just getting people together and then making sure the boxes are ticked in terms of having version control, having you know the same version, and you're just the person who's kind of pushing that, people will kind of just look to you like you're the leader of the team. And I, I've been taken by surprise uh, on that in the past. Um, so th these are some kind of notes relating to that. I think I think kind of what the social dynamic that happens there is when there's a situation where people need someone to be leading, they'll just kind of look towards whoever seems to be filling that role. Uh, so if that's you, um, make sure you know that and make it your first job. I don't care how good of a programmer or an artist or whatever you are. If you're leading a group of people, then making sure everyone else has what they need is way more important than anything you're going to be working on individually. Um, I say this from failing on this point uh, in the past. Uh, so, and then other just kind of leader th sort of things. It very helpful, I think, to, to think of your role as being a servant rather than a boss, making sure everyone has what they need and, uh, and, and to improve their experience rather than trying to control everything. Um, and yeah, don't try to be a hero and do everything. Just make sure the critical stuff is taken care of. Um, and the big priority, no one's waiting. Everyone feels included. Uh, start of the jam, there's going to be the idea generation phase. And this is kind of the most important part of the whole jam in a lot of ways, uh, because uh, if your idea is kind of bland or not very interesting, then the jam's not going to be as fun as it could be. If it's over ambitious, you're going to be in a lot of stress. Uh, and unfortunately, the kind of large group brainstorming that's, you know, everyone throws ideas out in a whiteboard and you just write them down uncritically and then eventually filter through it. Uh, opinion moment. That doesn't work. It's never worked. There's tons of science on this. I don't know why it's still a thing. But like the specific problems that come up is, uh, you know, group think tends to push towards ideas that... Uh, are the least offensive to anyone rather than what's actually interesting. Loud voices will tend to dominate the discussion and people who are a little quieter will get pushed out and not feel very included. Lots of other things like that. Um, but on the other hand, the whole team should be included somehow because if they're not, you know, being creative, then like, what's the point? Uh, and so one untested idea that I've kind of thought about uh, and I don't want to try out and see if it works is to kind of combine the elements of like just individual and group uh, and kind of get the best of both, which is starting off by having some time as individuals or pairs to you know bounce ideas off each other, try to come up with like as individuals, like coherent concepts, and then all present them to the group at once and kind of decide between those or maybe combine some ideas. Uh, Cause groups are pretty good for uh, filtering things, finding flaws and reaching consensus. So, you know, use the dynamics for, for where they're good. Um, and then occasionally, you know, it might be necessary to vote on things if you're just kind of deadlocked and not moving towards a consensus somewhere. Uh, so a voting system can be very helpful in breaking out of those. A system I've found that tends to work very well is uh, red, yellow, green voting. So anyone list all the ideas out, anyone votes red off the table, gone. Uh, and then of the ones that are remain, then whatever gets the most green votes wins. And that's kind of a way to make sure nobody's stuck with working on something they hate, but then within some stuff that everyone's okay with, the one people like the most uh, continues. And it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, and in terms of when idea generation is done, really the, the goal here is to make sure everyone has something to work on in a clear sense of context. So they're not just sitting on their hands like, what should I be doing? And they're also not going off in some direction that has to totally be cut. Because uh, you have time to spend another 15 minutes in discussing things. You do not have time for someone to be spending hours uh, not doing anything or days. Uh, and just have a clear sense of what your game's about so that as ideas evolve and grow, you'll have some core that you can stick to. 
Uh, overall recommended timeline, this is very loose and just kind of a, a rough sense of things. Uh, <clears throat> first day, kind of figuring out what your design is going to be about. Next couple of days, prototyping, filling out your design. Next couple of days, building out uh, some core content. Then days seven and eight, uh, you can start polishing your design and making it better. And haha, <laughs> just kidding. That is where you're debugging. Um, so uh, yeah, and then day nine, uh, actually making your build and making sure everything fits together. Final testing, you know, what did we miss? And then day 10 is publishing. Uh, that's not a trivial thing, getting all your stuff uploaded, filling out your jam page so that you have screenshots, a video, a description, uh, all, the, all that stuff is, you know, that takes up some time. So you need to account for that. And the thing I kind of note here is that if you break this down, only five of these 10 days are actually development, like actually building stuff. There's, there's brainstorming, polish, you know, all that, all that stuff is kind of things around it. So that's very, very short. Uh, so it's critical to manage scope. And I think there's a couple of ways I can think about this. One is the kind of you know rule of thumb of uh, if it sounds too easy, you will have time for half of it. Uh, you know, just whatever you think you can fill in, you know, shrink it down and down and down and, and then even further. Uh, one trick towards this, uh, because that can be a hard balance between well, I, but we want to make something interesting though, is identify anything that's not necessary but just makes the game better. Call, you know, that's polish and save that for later. Most likely it will never happen, but at least saying, well, we plan on this, just, just not right now, uh, it makes it easier to let go of that. Uh, another two kind of nifty uh, design uh, methodologies, uh, one I've heard about is called the inverse pyramid, where you kind of imagine your design as like a shape. And so you start out with a very small shape, and then when you add to it, you're keeping that same shape as you add layer after layer after layer. That's why you know, it's a, so a pyramid kind of keeps that shape as you as you add levels to it. Uh, and so you make the simplest possible version of the game, then you add another layer to make it more complicated, and, and you keep going until you run out of time. Uh, that way, you don't just get stuck scrambling at the end. Uh, if you have like kind of a weird shape where you have to build the whole thing for any of it to work, well, if that takes longer than you thought, you're stuck. Uh, and then similar to this, kind of in, from a different perspective, is the spiral development methodology, where you focus on the least fun aspect of games at all times, uh, so that you're always working on what the game needs the most. Uh, the, it's the same idea, basically, when you run out of time, you want to have built, built the best thing you could have made in that time, and knowing that how long things take is unpredictable. Once the jam is over, uh, take a break. Uh, you'll probably need it at that point, uh, even if you're feeling enthusiastic. And uh, there'll be more time to develop the game for a Pig Squad showcase, uh, if you know if that's if that's important. Uh, and you can also continue developing it <clears throat> if you want to to enhance a personal portfolio or whatever else you want to use the game for. If you're really interested in your game and you think it's awesome and you want to actually keep developing it out to publication, um, start over. You're probably a lot of the code's gonna not going to be stuff that you want to live with for a year. And uh, also probably sign a contract with your team and like really clarify how that structure sort of works, especially if there's money on the table. Um, the kind of informal structure that forms in a game jam is great for that, but it's not really a good fit for long-term development. So kind of let that reset. Final thoughts on the topic. Uh, primary objective, just have fun with this. Otherwise, what's the point? Uh, secondary objective, you know, if you can learn some things, uh, that's, that's awesome. And don't skip sleep, uh, especially now that it's the 10-day jam. Uh, that's not going to help you in any way. So, yeah, crunch doesn't work. Um, just don't. And, uh, and then thank your teammates, because whatever frustrations may have happened along the way, this group of people helped you create something that you could not have made on your own. And that is amazing. So, you know, have some gratitude and, and, and express that. Um, and, and then lastly, it's okay to throw all the stuff away. Um, if uh, the jam didn't go well, it was only 10 days, never think about it again. Even if it went well, you know, just what can you learn from it? You don't necessarily have to build it all out.